Coronary artery heart disease, in truth, need never, ever exist. And if it does exist, it need never, ever progress. This is a completely benign foodborne illness. It's fascinating that today in Western civilization we have this absolute uh, crescendo of disease. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity. It's like a tsunami overcoming these nations. And yet the interesting thing is that all experts would agree that the cause of this tsunami uh, really is, is our lifestyle. And the fascinating thing is that the major driving force within that lifestyle creating these illnesses is our dependence on animal nutrition. Now we really have to look at the ingestion of animal products because we really have a fair amount of data that clearly spell out the fact that our ingestion of animal products is contributing to this epidemic of illness. For instance, Harvard has an interesting study of 128,000 health professionals and as they follow them over decades, those that are eating meat have an earlier mortality. And they are, those that are eating meats that are smoked have an even earlier mortality. Then there's the study of uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, where when you look at the Seventh-day Adventists who were omnivores and compare them to those that were largely eating as vegans or vegetarians, absolutely no contest that the meat eaters and omnivores succumb earlier and uh, have a greater incidence of these common chronic killing diseases. Perhaps nothing is as powerful uh, in terms of clarifying the downside of dairy than really what uh, happened in Karelia, which is a province sort of in northern Finland. And in the 1950s and 60s and early 70s, Finland was truly the heart attack capital of the universe. And they had uh, some creative physicians who really went after this whole problem of excessive dairy and this clotted cream and these thick creams that the Finns were eating. And as they revolutionized that entire industry and got everybody a degree of public awareness so they were eating less of these products. Over the next three decades, they were able to reduce their rates of heart disease by 60% and reduce their rates of cancer by 40%. Very powerful. So really, when we look at this cause of heart disease, let's not be confused to blame it on genes or just blame it on somebody's age or blame it on the luck of the draw. Heart disease is a foodborne illness. And we now know that every time certain foods will pass your lips, you will further endanger and injure the endothelial cell capacity to make nitric oxide. So here you are at age five, six, or seven years of age, making plenty of nitric oxide. Nobody ever has a heart attack at five, six, or seven years of age. But we know from autopsy studies, by the time in this country you reach 17 or 18 years of age, you already have the foundation for heart disease. Not enough for your cardiac events yet, but now as you progressively over through your 20s and 30s and 40s, you eat these same Western foods, punishing your endothelial cells more and more, decreasing your level of nitric oxide. No great surprise then, when you no longer have enough nitric oxide to protect you, you then develop these blockages in plaque, and when the plaque ruptures, now you have a heart attack. When you can get these people to understand the science behind it and how they created their disease, and once they realize that you are empowering them as the locus of control, they can stop eating the foods that continue to injure their endothelial cells. And since this is not a malignancy, the endothelial cell recovers and it begins to make nitric oxide. And as the nitric oxide levels come up, the disease is halted and often we will see striking evidence of disease reversal. The most 
powerful bit of evidence that we have about eating plant-based and avoiding the animal foods of chicken, meat, dairy, poultry, are the nations of rural China, the Papua Highlands in New Guinea, uh, Central Africa, or the Tarahumara Indians in northern Mexico. The common denominator in all those nations is that cardiovascular disease is virtually non-existent. Why? They are plant-based. So the challenge really comes to those of us in the, uh, in the healing profession to really have a total rethink. What is it that we're doing? When you go to medical school, you get a tremendous education and you learn about how to define and identify these diseases. Once you've identified the disease, then you learn what are the drugs or the pills or the procedures or the operations that are going to be used to try to right the ship. But what is just not being done is basically is this whole business of prevention and treatment about the causation of the illness. And I think really uh, we can really be on the cusp, the cusp of what could be a seismic revolution in health. If we really devoted our time and energy and expertise to the lifestyle and this thing that actually tops all of lifestyle, which is nutrition. We can not only halt this epidemic of disease, and we can actually reverse it. The greatest gift that we could give to our family and our friends and those who are our patients is this gift of, of health. And the way that you get health through plant-based nutrition is you avoid metabolic injury. When you're eating dairy, when you're eating milk, you have this progressive uh, onslaught of metabolic injury. And as the body has this remarkable capacity to withstand this injury, it may take decades for this injury to present, it, present itself or manifest itself as obesity, as hypertension, as cancer, as heart disease. And the exciting thing is now that Really, the data are being pulled together strongly enough in many directions to make it absolutely clear that this is going to have to be really the most inexpensive and the most powerful way to restore and maintain health. Now, there are some who may feel that when they give up meat and dairy and move to a plant-based type of nutrition, that this diet may be considered to be extreme, strict, or radical. You know, it's very interesting when you think about those terms for a minute. And I'm going to use an example of a young 38-year-old physician that came up to me after I was presenting at the uh, Texas, Texas Academy of Family Practice. And he said, Dr. Esselstyn, I think your diet is really fairly extreme, strict, or radical. But he said, I know it works, but it seems to be extreme. And I said, well, let's talk about that just for a minute. Let's do this. Let's just pretend that I'm going to transplant you for the moment in Okinawa. And you walk up to this Okinawan who may be 95 or 100 years of age, and you say to them, gosh, you know, uh, you guys here in Okinawa, you've been eating this plant-based diet for thousands of years, but don't you think this is kind of crazy? It's extreme, radical, and uh, strict. And the Okinawans may nod politely and then say, no, sir, I think you have it just the wrong way around. We've been watching what's going on in, in America, and it seems that you have such a strict, extreme diet that as you eat it, there is this absolute cascade of illness and disease that even in a nation which is as wealthy as yours, you find that is financially unsustainable. My friend, you have it just the wrong way. Yours is the extreme diet.